question to have. Okay. How old were you during the Depression? Well, uh, I don't know how long the Depression... Hey! I don't know how long the Depression lasted, but uh, I remember Hoover Day is mighty well when Hoover was mm -hmm. president. Uh -huh. uh, It started in 1930. Yeah, I, me I remember. Uh, I, I remember before then. Hold up, before then. Uh, yeah. uh, people had a hard time making a living. Yeah. Uh, at, on a farm, the whole family went to the field and worked, especially the mother in the evening. And as they got big enough, they worked on the farm and plowed with mules. Yeah. Uh, I didn't see a tractor. I saw a tractor, a Ford, Ford Ferguson, I believe. Uh -huh. and, and, and they was hard to crank in the mornings. <laughs> Sometimes they put two mules to a tractor mm -hmm. and pull it off to get it started. Of course, the plows were, were near as good as they are now. Mm -hmm. but, uh, what, what year were you born, Mr. Jack? Huh? Which year were you born in? I born in 1912. 1912. So be 18 years old. Uh, we live about a mile down the road here for three years. 19, 22, 23, and 24. Wow. And uh, a man come from Tilton County about eight miles south of Mono Valley one evening in a two-horse wagon, two mules, uh -huh. and he spent the night with us. And, and we load his furniture the next morning, and my daddy's, and my daddy, we had a milk cow and about seven calves. Mm -hmm. My daddy hooked the milk cow behind his wagon, and the, the calves was loose. Mm -hmm. And my job was to keep them calves uh, following the wagon. Huh. And we went right through Mono Valley. And we didn't see a car nowhere till we got where we were going to move to. Mm -hmm. But sometimes them cows, if they saw a bunch of cows <laughs> they go over uh, there. up in the lot, they'd go up there and I'd had, I'd, I'd had to get, I had me a stick. I'd, I'd go up there and get them back following old, old cow in the wagon. Yeah. And I was tired when we got down. <laughs> and that happened five or six different places. Wow. And, and people back then had to raise a lot of their food. Yeah. And, uh, Do you remember how your family was affected? Lost your character. How was your family affected during the Depression? Do what? How was your family de affected during the Depression? Well, um, we, we, we couldn't buy a whole lot of clothes. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we, we was in, everybody's, most everybody out in the country was in the same shape. Uh, had a, we had a pinch, I had a figure, you know, yeah. and people, people were mostly raised cotton to try to pay their debts in the fall. Yeah, to sell it. And, but my daddy, uh, he didn't depend on cotton and everything. We got to raise uh, he had two or three brood sows. 
we raise hogs and yearlings and then just sell anything that we could sell. Back yeah. then, the, the, a lot of coal mines are running. Mm -hmm. uh, the people didn't make a whole lot of money in them. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember this electrician. Uh, he he said he never made under two dollars and a half a day, but that's a that the highest paid man I ever talked to. <laughs> wow. And, uh, back then, cotton, uh, if you made a half a bale of the acre, that, that, on average, that's pretty good. And the uh, cotton was about six and seven cents a pound after his bale up. Wow. And when, where you get your you grow this cotton in rows in fields, mm -hmm. and this first started a little square, and then went to a bloom. From the bloom, it went to a bowl, and that oh, bowl yeah. grew for about three weeks. Mm -hmm. And it got old enough, it spread it open, had, had cotton in between these spurs. And yeah. you, you picked it out of there by hand. Mm -hmm. You had a sack, and put it in your sack, and uh, and uh, and when you when when you got the cotton gin, they kept the seed that paid oh, yeah. for the ginning. Sometimes my daddy'd have a dollar and a half left out over the seed. But we we had our, we had all our cotton fifteen hundred pounds to make a bale. And uh, we went out to Jimerson at this cotton gin about about six miles from where we live. We got out there one morning at two about two thirty. They were Thirty-one bales ahead of us, and one Model T truck. <laughs> All the rest of them was wagons. Wow. Oh wow! We got away from there that evening between sundown and dark. Wow. I had to go home and mule and wagon. Wow. Yeah. Hard traveling then, wasn't it? But, uh, you, got? you I, maybe I'm talking too no, much. You're not. You, uh, that's, that's probably pretty good. Um, how, did yeah. entertain, so. how did your family entertain themselves? Well, uh, I guess working. <laughs> <laughs> working, yeah. Uh, we we would go to church in a two horse wagon, mm -hmm. and uh, what they was running the. We call it attracting meeting mm -hmm. for one week, and preacher Kosh, he kept a church forty three years. Wow! Wow! <laughs> he had a good voice. He loved to come to our house, and people would give chickens. Uh, canned fruit that they mm -hmm. raised on the farm yeah. and not much money. But I remember one time in 1925 when we left here and went to Sheridan County, mm -hmm. my daddy carried what they gathered up, the community gathered up at the end of the week. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, and he had about seven coops of frying sized chickens. <laughs> Maybe 30 in a coop and a lot of canned fruit and, and $39 in money. Wow. And that preacher was well satisfied. <laughs> and, but, and Probably a lot back then. 
Huh? It's probably a lot back then. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. Uh, after I got up about 16 years old, I got hunting work, anything I could find. And I worked, when I was 18, I worked at a sawmill. After we laid our crop by, I got through working our crop out. I worked 12 hour shifts for one dollar, and it was hard work. Yeah. And I've, I've helped cut a log with a cross cut saw. One, oh. one man, you saw. Yeah, I've seen that before. You've seen that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, we, we would cut logs, cut the trees down and saw them up in logs. Yeah. For 75 cents for every thousand feet of logs. And, and these big trucks, now they carry about five or six thousand feet. Mm -hmm. you know, they carry the whole tree. Yeah. But we had to finish the saw, and my daddy could file a cross cut saw, he could fix one of them. Uh, back then, a uh, black diamond file cost 20 cents, and a gallon of kerosene was 10 cents. Wow. And uh, uh, if, if you're in good timber, me and another man could take, we could cut 4,000 feet of logs a day, 75 cents a thousand. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's See, we had little expenses mm -hmm. out. Yeah. Uh, this Mr. Redden, in 1939, he had some old gum, that sweet gum, black gum, mm -hmm. and they use, they still use that kind of wood. Yeah. Uh, but he he said, as he got through laying by, he said, uh, I, I'd like to get rid of that gun, he said, if you want to go in with me, uh, and we, we go in halves, I won't charge you nothing for the wood. Me and him worked five days, I, a hole, like a mm -hmm. hole in the garden. I straightened one of them out, and it's in, it's in, the, it's in July, late July. 1939. We worked five days. I bought a, I bought a fire, a black diamond fire for 20 cents and a gallon of kerosene. And my daddy fixed, I got his saw. And me and him cut, we cut, and them old gums at that time of the year, uh, they just you didn't have to do a whole lot to them. Sometimes they just, you yeah. know, the, the bark would come off. And he had everything down on paper. And two trucks hauled what we cut five days. And we had 68 cents each. Wow, after five days? Uh -huh. and but in 1941, uh, a man that looked at this big farm, a big old Jew owned it in Birmingham. Mm -hmm. uh, he had a sawmill, but he had a lot of renters. He, his farms, most of his Farmers rented on hays. Right. He would furnish a mule and half the fertilized and the land and the farmers but but I had my own mule and I had a two a one horse wagon mule. Mm -hmm. Uh but he 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 said I he said, Check I can't work you. He called he called me check. Mm -hmm. 
He said, I can't work all my men around. And one Sunday morning he came over there early, before church. He said, uh, I'll make a deal with him. He said, I got 30 wells, and i give you a dollar. He said, have you ever cleaned out a well? I said, yes, sir. He said, i give you a dollar a well. And the first well, well I cleaned out, they had men on top. They had things across up here, um, they go, like a log, and, and mm -hmm. had things over here on this, and one over here, two men. Right. Yeah. And, and this well down there was, was a caved in all the way around the, and down in them wells that, that they was, they was plank, uh, what you call a curb, they made them four feet high and four feet each way. Mm -hmm. And I had an extra rope. It, you could see all around in that old red mud and stuff. Mm -hmm. It takes 12 hours to clean that well out. And this extra rope I had, uh, it was dangerous looking down in there. Mm -hmm. And women folks on top said, check, you're going to get covered up, come out of there. And it slid in one time, and, and slid up to my knees, because I couldn't pull out. I said, mm -hmm. pull the rope. I had the rope, and they put me out of that mud, yeah. mm -hmm. and and they had piles of rock up there, and that big, the bigger your head, yeah. and I got enough mud out of there. Uh, uh, I had to make me two curbs, four feet high, and and a, a pile of rocks around that that high, and put rocks down inside. And them people that lived there at that place said every time it come a big rain, they'd been there about 15 or 16 years, every time it come a big rain, the water was muddy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But they, they said after that, it never was muddy no more. That's yeah, a big plain water. Yeah. I, I learned to put on two power overhauls. Mm -hmm. Some <laughs> that water was cold. <laughs> The little keg uh, draws the stuff, uh, mud and water and stuff, have about 30 gallons. Wow. Of course, they done it on each side, you know, that the rope went around and around this right. thing. But I, I cleaned out th 30 wells, and uh, Mr. Toad Posey, and my, he gave me look like a brand new twenty dollar bill, hmm. huh. and, and Nellie was a little baby then, and Pearl was Pearl was just been born, hmm. my youngest daughter. I told I told my wife I said, I'm gonna buy some shoes this morning with this twenty dollar bill. I didn't you didn't see me any, but uh, I didn't, and then, uh. I'd, keep, I'd take that thing out of my billfold every once in a while and look at it. <laughs> and one morning, it was two. Oh. And I told my wife, I said, Look here, Mr. Toad Posey gave me two twenty dollar bills. Wow. She said, What's you gonna do with that other one? I said, I'm gonna put the saddle on my mule and carry him back his twenty. Mm -hmm. And I did. When I, hand, when I told them what happened, that's I found it. He bad, the bat, bat, bat in his eyes. He said, Check, you come over here and go to work at my sawmill Monday morning. I got me a job by being honest. There you go. <laughs> and I worked yeah. there till in the winter. Uh, I, 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 I gathered my crop. Most on Saturday, I'd already, and uh, I got a job in oil mines, and I didn't have no money and 
from my board up there, and I went over to this man one morning early. I said, Mr. Posey, I need fifty dollars. He just got that bill folded out and handed it to me. I, I'd already I told, told him about me getting a job, mm -hmm. and I didn't get a payday for three weeks. And he said, Check, you don't never give, give me none of this back. Don't feel bad about it. I said, if I thought I couldn't pay you back, I wouldn't be a barn it. Mm -hmm. And I, I carried him his money, money, money one morning. Mm -hmm. So his pay is to be honest. Go straight. Yes, it does. Yeah. So, what was your best memory of this time? Huh? What was your best me memory? Well, I, I was happy farming. I, I was happy all the time farming. I left to work. And uh, uh, I, I guess, I guess about as happy as I was. My mother and neighbors, mm -hmm. unless it's one maybe here and yonder, five, six, seven miles apart, the mother, the mother never did have a a, a coat, you know, a good overcoat. Mm -hmm. And at, when I was 18 years old, I started peddling when I was 16 years old, raising peanuts, peas, uh, corn, uh, ice potatoes, and watermelons, and cantaloupes. When I was 16 in a two-horse wagon, I'd leave way full daylight. I'd, I'd go to Wilson, Montevallo, and Aldridge. Aldridge is about two miles out of Montevallo, but mm -hmm. coal mines are working then. And uh, I, I would, I would, I would buy my mother if she needs some pans, pots, dishes, and buy soap, and washing powders, and uh, I had regular customers in Wilton. Mother Valley and Alders. I sold. I, I sold a lot of stuff. I, and I got. I got enough money when I was 18 to get me a, a 1928 model Chevrolet car, <laughs> a touring car. Mm -hmm. Good old car back then. Yeah. I pedaled in it. And the mines was Union. Mm -hmm. And we. We organized a, a farmers' union. Uh, we met once a week. It was open up with prayers, just like church. Mm -hmm. And I had a union card where I could sell stuff mm -hmm. at, at the mines. Mm -hmm. But one morning, I, 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 I changed clothes after I got my car loaded up. And I left my union card in my dirty old hall pocket. Mm -hmm. And I parked over at the commissary, big store. They had a lot of different things in that store. Back then, have you ever heard of Clacker? You have, haven't you? Mm, I've heard of it. Well, the, the, the mines had Clacker. It, it wasn't bills, is it? Dime, nickels, and quarters, mm -hmm. half a dollar, and people would check out Clacker before payday, and I got a lot of Clacker, and I could cash it in at that commissary. I'd get eighty cents for a dollar worth of Clacker, but that morning, day I forgot my union card. Well, I was selling stuff right beside it. I pulled up, pedal, hit, headed towards, I was close to the commissary. But a man walked out there and uh, dressed up in a suit of clothes. He said, Did y'all make him show you his card? And I told him what happened. He said, You're supposed to have it with you. And 
some of them black men and white men. So Mr. Chester got one. He said, well, he's supposed to have it with him. He said, y'all know what to do. And the one that didn't know me, they got hold of that old car and they lifted it. They're going to turn it over. They lift that thing that high off the ground. I backed up against the wall. I, I got me up two rocks in my hands. I didn't want to turn my car over. I said, somebody get a skinned head. I guess I was a little bit mean. <laughs> And they let it down easy, but I didn't never forget that card no more. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I got enough money to get me a brand new two horse wagon. And uh, C.E. Hornsby sold wagons, Weber wagons at Centerville. And I went down there and paid $20 down on a brand new one horse wagon and uh, and uh, I had three years to pay it out and he charged me three dollars interest on that sixty five dollars called me sixty eight dollars I paid it out in twelve months huh. and me and my wife and two little kids we ride to church in that wagon on Sunday <laughs> And, that, and 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 one night, me and two boys counted at church. There was twenty-three wagons. Some of them was buggies, if you know what a buggy mm -hmm. is. Why twenty-three different vehicles that were pulled by mules and horses, and one Model T at church. 23 vehicles tied around in the woods. <laughs> one, one family, did a, we lived about a mile from the church, and this family, Headley, might, some of them might say Headley, and they had about six, seven kids. Back then, uh, families was pretty good size, most everybody. Yeah had five, six children, some of them seven, some of them twelve. Yeah. <laughs> but this family lived uh, about a mile further away from the church than we did, left a little two-year-old in the church. That, 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 uh -huh. and they forgot that uh, they, uh, they didn't check them in the wagon, you know. Yeah. They got home. The little boy wasn't in there, <laughs> and the daddy had to go back about two and a half miles and said he's laying on the bench asleep in the church. <laughs> <laughs> so, did you realize that the depression was affecting the entire country? Well, there was a lot of talk about uh, depression, and uh, some people had more than others. And some, some people, uh, I don't know, they just never could accumulate a good living. Mm -hmm. But I'd say, I'd say the biggest part of them raise mostly what they eat. Uh, this peddler, for years, <coughs> from, from uh, Thorsby, that's about four miles south of Jimerson, Children County. Uh, he come around once a week in a Model A, and he had a flower and lard and canned goods, and he bought eggs. We have sold eggs, big eggs, for 11 cents a dozen. Wow. And, uh, the best of flour was about 24 pound bags, or 25, I don't know, I can't remember. I think I'm in 25 bags, 55 cents, 25 pounds of flour. 
what you make biscuits out of. Mm -hmm. But we raised our own corn, and we uh, we had a thing, a, a corn chiller. You turn by hand, you put the air in the top, and the, the cob would come out, mm -hmm. and then we'd, we'd share corn cake to the grist mill and grinding in the meal. And the, the, the miller would take corn toll. He, he, he'd taken corn instead of money. People didn't have money to pay it, maybe to have it done. But uh, we had a good time on the farm. And, and we had four mules for eight years. Wow. And we uh, we raise a saw syrup and ribbon cane syrup. I ain't seen none of that old timey ribbon cane in forty years, I don't guess. And we sell syrup in the fall and we plant velvet beans in our corn and one winter we pick forty eight tons of beverly beans wow. and I see my daddy sell five tons at a time for one dollar a pound and I see my daddy sell five tons of sweet potatoes now we raised about after I got up about 12 years old we raised I guess about the happiest uh, that I ever felt, I came at, I was about 19, I think, might have been between 18 and 19. I carried my dad and mother to, where well, they sold sandwiches. They never had been in the place. We got dinner for 35 cents. I just, I had went to Birmingham several times. I said, well, I, I, uh, that old cook, cookie's mountain down there, it ain't, it, it go down a piece and turn, turn this way, <laughs> and uh, you, uh, it sharp turns. I drove my car up there by myself. I didn't. I didn't know what to think about all them tall buildings. <laughs> Before the first time I went up there, but I, I went in this big store and had a little money in my pocket, peddling. I found the prettiest woman coat I ever seen. I said to myself, that will just fit my mother. It was, was Yeeling, Yeeling's uh, something, it's a big store. Mm -hmm. I went upstairs. I said, what the cheapest, best price you give me on this coat? He said, they've been miming in him on the pay down on that coat. He said, I, do, I, don't, I don't do nothing like that. He said, I'll take $30 for it. And that was the first coat my mother had. My eyes water sometimes. I've got mm -hmm. bad eyes. And I, that was one of the happiest days of my life I, that I can remember. Mm -hmm. She wore that coat to church. There wasn't another woman I don't guess had worn that pretty. Mm -hmm. And they just carried on, carried on about her. I told my daddy, I said, you need a suit of clothes. In about two weeks or three, I bought him a new suit of clothes. Wow. He had a suit. Back then, men went in church with a coat on. Mm -hmm. they, they didn't have no yeah. sleeves or nothing yeah. on the arms. They, they all, most all of them had a coat of some kind right. back then. And uh, the children didn't get in no troubles I ever know to. 
nowhere around in the community. Uh, they knew to mind their parents, but uh, Um, what did people around you think of Herbert Hoover? The, the, well, back when Hoover was president, uh, when I was 14, I bought a Model T car for $7. And uh, I parked it on the shed. I got it. Me and this boy I run around together about six years he was with me. And then it was a hill not too far from our house. If a Model T went up, a Model T had low and high gear and that's all. <laughs> and two gears. I, I put a dollar worth of gas in it. At, it's 25 cents a gallon then. And I went over that hill in high gear, but when I parked that thing on the shed, my daddy could drain the gas out of it the next morning. Hmm. I didn't have nothing to run it on. Mm -hmm. I sold $33 of parts off that car. Parts. And I gave seven dollars <laughs> for it. The first thing I sold was the front axle and the wheels for seven dollars <laughs> and a half. And the man made him a two wheel cart and it had shaves in it and he built a little bed on it. And that's what's called a Hoover cart. <laughs> and a lot of farmers, that's all they had, a Hoover cart. <laughs> made out of Model T front ends. And, but my daddy, <coughs> in 19, 25, 20, in 1927, we cleared, uh, sold enough stuff, we cleared $750 that year. Wow. And Long Lewis Investment mm -hmm. sold Weber wagons. My daddy went up there and paid $103 for a two horse, brand new two horse wagon. He didn't have no bed on it. My daddy made a bed and made brakes for it. And, and uh, my daddy didn't care for us using that wagon, going to church, a bunch of young people, just so we could be able to go to that field the next morning. That's right. <laughs> and and we'd, we'd go, maybe be around a tractor meeting. We, we, about where we live is Union Church. Shady Grove Church, Ashby Church, Providence Church, all of them about six miles from where we live. And we, young people, we'd go, we'd go to that church in two old way and maybe have 12, 15 young people in it. What did people around you think of Franklin D. Roosevelt? I remember I him pretty well. Uh, I, 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 I can't, I ain't got no comment much on that. Right. And don't think nothing about my eyes or water and it just okay. like That's this. Okay. Uh, uh, Alright, well, um, how long did it take your family to recover from the depression? Do what? How long did it take your family to recover from the depression? To do what? Recover from the depression. Well, uh, we, uh, uh, 1927, uh, uh, oh, nine, Nineteen twenty five, nineteen twenty seven. When we made that, we made over seven hundred dollars. Had that much money left, mm -hmm. and uh, we done good from then on. Mm -hmm. We we done we we left that <coughs> place and, 
and moved on Bearser's farm, and all he wanted was a fourth of the cotton and corn. You could plant all the pastures you wanted. And that's where I got to peddling, raising that stuff. We raised a, we raised a thousand, over a thousand gallons of syrup every year for eight years, I know. <laughs> and then that, after night, after 1920, 28, 25, no, 1927 when we had that money left, but we done good from then on. But my daddy would work in the winter at a sawmill uh, 12 hours for one dollar. Oh. After we got our crop laid by, he always had a job of some kind. and. And we we get a new pair of overhauls once a year, and a pair of work shoes once a year. But we had dress shoes. I was a uh, uh, back then. Most of the boys wore knee pants to church and in in warm weather, and and a. Uh, uh, I've seen my mother uh, use uh, old old holes to patch a hole in the old holes. And back then, my mother washed on an old rub board. Yeah, I've, I've she, seen those. <laughs> and, and they, on, as we moved on Bess's land, there was pine. You could top a two horse wagon at one and load it with pine. There was so much rich pine. We had fireplace in both ends of the houses. And after I, after I got up about 17 years old, my, my daddy's uncle farmed with us seven years. And after we moved down back down to Children County, his brother kept coming over there wanting him to live with him. And he left and he he didn't he didn't live too long. But, uh, my neighbor family on the farm had milk cow. Round the they had milk and butter and they raised their own lard and meat and mom, my daddy would we kill two big hogs every year, and we'd cure that meat, and and two big hogs would make four fifty-pound cans of lard, and that was our summer meat. Well, the lard used every day, but. For about 12 years, my daddy would kill a hog about every two months in the winter. Mm -hmm. And then big hogs, we'd save them to, through the summer. And he'd always put a yearling up about three months and feed him corn. And we'd, we'd grind half beef and half pork and make sausages out of them. And my mother had a big old pan that hold about 40 sausages. But she would grind these sausages up with your hand. Mm -hmm. And she'd, uh, she'd put the pepper and salt and what they need. Uh, and she'd mix all that up with the hand, you know. Mm -hmm. And and she'd try one or two and see if they'd season enough. If it wasn't, she'd do it a little more, and we'd can them things. We'd can half pork and half beef, and them was the best sausages I ever eat. You couldn't be, you couldn't beat them. You think the farmers fared better during the depression than than other people because they were so used to oh, living Lord, off the land. Then the public worst, yeah, right. yeah. Mm -hmm. My dad is oldest sister when I was four years old I can remember they left the farm 
his oldest son, they had, they had seven, they had, they had six girls and four, they had seven girls and three boys. And, and they, they was poor, they didn't, but, but right, right that, I was four years old. And the, they left the farm and went to Cotton Mill in, in Alabaster here. Mm -hmm. Well, Aunt Eddie, the mother, didn't have no shoes. Mm -hmm. And they found some where they dumped trash. But there wasn't mates, but she wore them anyhow. Mm -hmm. And they got a job in the cotton mill. The one was old enough, but they they couldn't feed a bunch of people two weeks. Yeah. They, they would come down to our house every summer. I ain't would. Uh, her husband worked in the cotton mill. Uh, about five kids that wasn't old enough, and they stayed two weeks. And I remember them saying, uh, we, we couldn't feed people like y'all do. We, we just wouldn't have it. And when I was about 15 years old, as we got through laying by, I'd go up to Slur and spend a week, maybe two weeks, with my cousin. And back, back then, they, they did have uh, electricity in the house. Mm -hmm. Little old bitty bugs, one in a room, and my, my aunt taking in washing. <coughs> she had a, uh, we sold stove wood, uh, two off wagon load, for two dollars. And my aunt would wash for 25, a family of clothes for 25 cents. She would wash four clothes a day. A dollar a day around that hot pot and everything. And one time I was up there, and the, and the older girl had looked at the, at the house, you know, bought the groceries and things. I remember her saying that pay the light bill once a month like you do now. She said, I got the highest light bill I ever got, a dollar and 79 cents. I never will forget what she said. She gripes about that dollar and seventy-nine cent light bill now. They had four bedrooms in that big house. And the, 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 the cotton mill company charged one dollar a room rent for them houses. They had two bedrooms. They had houses up there rented for two dollars a month. Two dollars a month, but we never, we never did pay no rent till I, till I left farm in 1944. We didn't have no electricity, and we used use lamps, kerosene. So, so the farmer didn't, didn't, wasn't really as affected by the depression. Huh? The farmer wasn't as affected by the depression as the city. The no, people no, the, the, uh, yeah. the, the coal miners, mm -hmm. they got, uh, my mother's youngest brother lived at West Blockton. Mm -hmm. And the coal miners, had, I can't remember exactly what year that was, but my, my, my mother's youngest sister's husband, they had a bunch of kids, he walked from West Blockton and eight miles south of Mona Valley, he walked in the house. He said, "We out. We ain't got nothing to eat." My daddy, and we picked up canned goods, and they did bushel of meal. They made cornbread out of them. And some lard. My daddy hooked his mules up to a two-horse wagon 
and carried him to West Blockton. A lot of food in that wagon. We had a lot of food. They got up there at 12 o'clock, and it took about 20, at least 25 miles. And Uncle Lyde told my daddy, he said, my, my next door neighbor's got eight kids. Said they ain't had a bite to eat in two days. Wow. Can I carry some of this food out there to them kids? My daddy said, I ain't got nothing to do with it. Said it's yours. And, and of course I didn't go. My daddy got back home at 12 o'clock the next day. At, at, at least 50 miles with them news. Wow. And and they got to where they'd come down through there on Saturday with a ton and a half truck for collecting for the miners. Mm -hmm. uh, and my daddy would give every time. They'd be five or six men. Yeah. Wouldn't, wouldn't give no money, give food. food. And I heard my daddy say one day, he said, uh, he said we got a lot of stuff together. Stuff. And said, uh, do, do any of you men want, want to work on the farm for money? And one of them said, what do you pay? My dad said, I'll give you a dollar a day. The man said, we can't work for that. We union. Hmm. My, dad, got no food. <laughs> my daddy didn't give him nothing else. Mm -hmm. He didn't give him nothing else. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes, sir.